Hello. Hi. <laughs> You're just in time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've got to get the yeah. website. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Welcome, everybody. Um, we're going to do our talk about combating climate change with a Jersey-friendly art. Um, I'm Karen Walzer from Barnica Bay Partnership. I'm the public outreach coordinator there. Good. And good morning. Uh, my name is Becky LeBoy. I'm the education outreach specialist with Ocean County Soil Conservation District. So the two of us are a team. We usually do these talks together. Um, I introduced the website, and I'll give you the background on that. And Becky has done many, many projects um, actually implementing Jersey Friendly Arts, you know, in demonstration gardens and helping homeowners get started with it too. So she's gonna share with you lots of beautiful pictures of gardens and plants as you can see the website in action. So the website, um, we, Barnica Bay Partnership created it. We got a grant um, from, from the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection back in 2013 to create the website with the idea of um, doing something about non-point source pollution, which is the type of pollution that's coming from everyone's yard. And it's the major source of pollution in New Jersey right now. All of New Jersey's waterways and bays are affected by it. And a lot of the sources of pollution are coming from people's yards, like the fertilizers that they use on their lawn, pesticides that they use, um, and of course, many other things that can come off the yard. So um, we, Initially, we're going to create the website for the Barnegat Bay Watershed, because that's where the Barnegat Bay Partnership. Uh, by the way, that's the national estuary program for Barnegat Bay. There's 28 of those programs around the country. And of course, our focus is water quality, clean water. Um, but the DEP said, you know, as long as you're doing this, there's a need for it around the whole state. So let's make it a statewide site. So it is. So it addresses, um, you know, issues around the whole state. So I'm going to give you kind of a quick tour of the website to introduce you to it. And hopefully, I don't know, has anyone seen it before, tried it out before? Okay. So hopefully, you know, some of the rest of you will go home and try it out. There's a card on here if you need to remember. Uh, it's pretty simple, though. It's jerseyyardsplural.org. So if you remember that, you know, you can, you can check it out and try it. And I'm going to show you some features that you definitely will want to use at home. So like I said, the main thing, that's why, you know, how fertilizers are harming, you know, that's the background of it. But it's also going to help uh, homeowners to have healthier yards for themselves, too. Um, let me start with the plant database. Um, it's up to you all. Can you see it okay? Or dim it? I would dim it. Okay, that's better. All right, so one of the main features of the site um, is the plant database, which people love to use because it helps you search for plants um, that fit the conditions in your yard. When you first uh, go to this page, you can register or sign in and save your plant list. And then I'll show you that at the end because I actually you know, set it up for me and I'll show you the list that I saved. So it is searchable. I have to get used to this. First time doing it. All right. So it starts with a list of over 350 plants. The majority are native plants, native to New Jersey. Some of them are what we call Jersey friendly. So there are some non-natives in there, but they're non-natives that are not invasive. You know, very low maintenance plants because we want to give people some options. We have some annual plants in there. So, you know, just to add to the database. Um, each of these, I'll show you this as each plant in the database has a full page of detail. So, you know, if you have questions about any of them, you know, go to the details page, tells you the type that it is, if it's a native or not, you know, what kind of wildlife it attracts. And these are all filters that we can search for, which I'll show you in a second. Type of soil, sandy, um, so this is a good one to pick. And a couple things that you can't really search for, but is important to know, like the growth height spread, you know, because when you plant something, you want to give it enough room, you don't want to crowd things in. So now we'll go back. Okay, so the filters. 
So you pick your region. What am I going to pick for the pine lands? Good. <laughs> Say it louder. Coastal plain. Coastal plain. All right. <laughs> but it's got the four main, you know, broad physiographic regions, and you would pick the one that you live in. And then we have a couple special eco regions. And guess what? One of them is the pine land. So you can see, you know, over 350 to start with. Now, you know, we're already narrowing down the list. And then plant type. So I think Becky's going to talk about a lot of shrubs today. I'm going to pick shrub. Uh oh. What did I do? Uh, noise. Oh. Ah, uh, just Sorry. All right. <laughs> All right. Be careful here. You can select native only, which I'm going to do. That down to 34. Um, just to show you, if you wanted to track a particular type of wildlife, you like hummingbirds, you want to attract them to your yard, you could select one of these, which I won't. Deer resistance. That is always really going to narrow down your list a lot. And it's never foolproof. But some people, it's really important. They want to know what has a little more deer resistance. And then these, of course, are super important. So you want to know, you know how much sun or shade you have in the yard. Your soil type. So we're going to do sand. And I guess for purposes of today, we'll do. Hey, it's actually more partial shade than sun. So it doesn't have to All right. Oop. pH. We'll do slightly. So this is all things that you're going to find out before you use the database. I'll show you um, after we, I run through this. There are eight steps to a Jersey friendly yard. Very important step is to get your soil tested because you need to know the pH. You need to know the type of soil that you have. Um, and you're also going to look at and assess your yard to see what the light conditions are. Maybe you have a wet spot. You know, maybe there are places where people walk all the time. So when you're planning that out, that's, that's an, a really important step. Soil moisture is a constantly wet, kind of a boggy area. Um, most of them are medium or well-drained. And these question marks, you know, I won't take time to do that today, but it explains and kind of defines what all of this <laughs> means. Drought tolerance. So I think um, drought tolerance is very important, especially in the Pine lands area. So now you see, we started with 350, and with the different things we've selected, you can go back to the top to see what you've chosen, and then your list is on the left. So here's the final list, and I'd be willing to bet that Becky probably has some of these in her, her presentation today. So that's the list of shrubs. Well, no. <laughs> what am I touching that's doing that? Anything. We'll never know. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to X that out. All right. I'll handle it next time. Yeah. <laughs> do it just don't hit the one in the top yeah. corner. Oh. Not that one. No, 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 no. <laughs> All right. So that's the how you use the database. Now I just want to quickly show you. Um, if on this list, you might not be interested in all of them, but you might say, oh, like I really, really like to add um, purple. Oh, now you did. That will Yeah. All right, I'm just going to go with black huckleberries. <laughs> if I touch the wheelbarrow, first in the color, you've added that to that list I was talking about. I'm gonna, I set it up so hopefully it'll go right to my list. Uh, so once you log in, register, you can save it to your list. And here's the list that I have. And then I can print it. See a little tab up there, print your list. It saves it for up to 60 days if you want to go back and change some things around. So that's really good. You know, you've got the Latin name, you've got the common name, um, and a short description, a little photo of it. You can take it to the nursery or you can, you know, look online. You've got it saved and you got it. So a lot of people like this feature of the website and use it. People have used it in their own yards. People use it for projects. I know Becky, she'll talk about some, some of the projects she did where they actually used the database to search for the plant. So 
So the eight steps, this is what you'll do, especially step one and two before you use that, that searchable database. You want to do a little planning. So each of these steps takes you to a page. You click on it, it'll take you to a full page explaining, show you step one. Plan before you plan. So there's a lot of content on the website, but it's pretty succinct, right? So there's a page for each step. Um, I'm touching too far over. Is that the? Yeah. All right. Um, so anyway, planning before you plan, and get to know your soil. So the second step is start with healthy soil. But this, you know, gets you thinking about that. And there are a lot of links. Um, on each page that take you to more information. Soil, um, super important step. So we talked about that. And on this one, there is a lot of good information about how to get your soil tested. So there's a link to the Rutgers Soil Testing Lab. You can pick up a kit at your local um, extension office. You can, if you go to their, their page, you can actually package it yourself. It tells you how to take the sample. Basically, you put it in a little plastic baggie and you mail it off to them um, with a form that you would print out and fill out and a check for um, basic soil tests is only $20. That's, that's a bargain. And then they'll mail you back the result in about two weeks. And there's even a link to a video that shows you how you'll take your soil sample. I mean, pretty easy. You're just digging down a couple inches, but you want to take it from multiple spots and mix it together so you have a representative sample that you're sending to them. Okay. Uh, one other thing I need to show you, actually. There, we have on the site a page about landscaping in the Pinelands. Um, background information, you know, about the... No, 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 Another thing I want to point out, that links you to a page on the website where to buy these plants. Um, the nurseries that you can go to, by county, listed by county. There are actually some online sources, too. I know you're all familiar with Pinelands Nursery, which is wholesale only if you're getting a quantity of plants for a project or something. But just for your yard, um, Pinelands uh, Direct is an offshoot of Pinelands Nursery, and they're retail, um, but only online. So you can order just one or two plants from them, and they'll ship them to you. And there's definitely, you know, there's a lot of other good ones. Toad Shade is another good source of plants, you know, that you would order and they would mail to you. Um, but anyway, there's links here to some really great guides. Well, I think this is a printout of one of them. Uh, native Pinelands Plants for the Landscape. Good place to start. Good resources. So that's the purpose of the website, right? To provide you with resources information, tools to get you started in your yard because, you know, it's important to make your yard healthy for you, but it's also going to help the environment. That's the whole point of the website, you know, landscaping for a healthy environment, cleaner water, and definitely healthier habitat for wildlife. One other thing, the PPA runs a native plant sale. Yes. Twice a year, April. That's right. Later in the fall. That's right. And we also have, um, you can go directly to their site. They, they always put it up there. Um, but uh, we have a Jersey Friendly Arts Facebook page where we, once the sales start in the spring, we try to put up there, you know, let people know this is the date of the sale. You know, so links to their website. So that's a quick overview. Just quickly, I'm not going to run through the whole thing, but I want to show you the um, other feature. All right, well. We do have a page about native plants and invasive plants. You can get more information about that. And then, like I said, where to, where to buy them. Uh, more resources on this page. We do have 
an annual conference. We just had ours. It's, it's every October. It's at Ocean County College for the last three years. This was our third one in 2019. We might move it to a different location because we're trying to you know, get more statewide participation. Though we do did get a lot of people from around the state. We had up to the maximum 200 for this last one. But we have some great speakers. If you're familiar with Pat Sutton, who's a naturalist from Cape May. She was one of the speakers, and Bruce Crawford from Rutgers Gardens, he's the director. He spoke to about uh, designing a landscape with native plants. So uh, workshops, we have a native plant sale, so it's a good conference. Um, the two lectures at your uh, conference, are they online? Uh, no. The first year we had the conference, we actually did um, try to do that, and we, got, we had a lot of complaints that... Um, People were there. They had to keep the lights up to film it, and they said we couldn't see the screen well. So, but we try to put, you know, if they'll share that with us, we put the PDF of their presentation, a link to it, um, on there. And then one final thing. This is another kind of cool tool on the website. It's called the Interactive Yard. It's leaking. Yeah, it's done. Oh, sorry. Okay. Let's give it a second. So what this is, is um, a way to learn all of this content without having to read every single page. If you like to play and click, this is for you. So it starts with a very generic New Jersey yard with a lot of lawn, a um, few trees, a little landscaping in front of the house. And you go through, as you go through these steps, um, you are going to do things like remove invasive plants, add more beds, which is reducing your lawn area, which is the high maintenance type of things that takes a lot of fertilizer and pesticides. Um, you could, you're gonna add a pollinator garden, a rain garden, a vegetable garden. Um, so it's got a lot of information, but you're, you're clicking and you're playing with it. So I, I might just show you. Adding beds. So it's all clicking. So you click to it, click it, and you're going to add this bed, which is taken out a while on. And then you start adding plants. Should I add calorie pair? No. <laughs> non native invasive. No. So if somebody doesn't know and say, oh, I love calorie pairs, and then they click on that. It's a learning thing, right? You're going to find out this is invasive. Don't, don't plant this. It's spreading into the wild and displacing native plants that, that support our wildlife. So that's that. And then you just keep on adding. There are, here's an example of a non-native, you know, plant that's in there, a hosta, which the deer would love. Flowering right? <laughs> uh, dogwood. If you wanted more information about these, you know, without switching over to the plant database, you could just hit that and you get a, um, a summary. A pretty good summary, actually. So if you're thinking, oh, maybe that's a cool plant to put in my own yard. So there you have it. So you've added a bed, you know, you've added a lot of native plants. So I'm going to skip down for the sake of time so you can play with all of this. And then at the end, that's the completed yard. It looks a lot different than the beginning, right? And it's not something like some people look at and say, oh, I'll never be able to do that. But it's, it's to give you ideas. These are some things you can do. These are some plants you can use. Um, here's the, the green garden. This is a pollinator garden, a vegetable garden, which is definitely um, low maintenance as far as taking out lawn, you know, a lot less use of inputs of chemicals and things. Rain barrels, you know, everything that's in there. Um, that's covered in the different steps to a Jersey family yard. Okay, uh, the only other thing I do want to show you, there's an Ask an Expert page on the site. So if a person has a particular question, gardening question, um, mm -hmm. they can you know, type in their name, their email, and then they have to pick their county and it will go to the Rutgers Cooperative Extension Office that covers that county. And then, of course, you type in your question, and then they, they should respond. A lot of cases, it's going to the master gardeners in that, in that county. Um, so I just think people are 
you know, a way to get their questions answered. Some people don't even know they can go to their master learner for uh, answers. So that's kind of an overview. Becky, did I leave anything out? That and uh, they can actually email you directly as well? Yes. Yes. So back to the top, that little envelope, there's the Facebook page, the envelope. The email will come to me. So if you have a question about the website itself or you want to tell me, hey, you should be adding this plant to your database, you know, you can shoot me an email. Okay. Thank you. And uh, the interactive yard um, uh, piece there, does that allow you to plan? I think you mentioned a rain garden to deal with drainage issues. There is actually a page on the site about rain gardens. Mm -hmm. And a lot of this is here's New Jersey information and then links. So we link you to the Rutgers Water Program, which has tons of information about rain gardens. Um, you know, you can. What? I think it's, is it under creative Jersey Yeah. 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 So like, you know, an explanation and such. The Rutgers people were very helpful. I mean, just the like green garden and yeah. you know, our yard. They had a program where you could do it and get reimbursed. Well, I hurt my back and I couldn't yeah. actually dig the rain garden and they came and dug it. Yeah, they will do that. They're, they're amazing. They'll get student volunteers to come in and dig it for you. Uh, sometimes they go into community. I know they did that through um, PPA. Um, they had their uh, landscape makeover program where they brought them in and homeowners could meet with them and they would actually um, do a design for your, is that what you participated yeah. in? Okay. Yeah. So it's awesome. But um, you know, it does cost money. So they, there has to be a grant funding source for that. And then you got your free plants, right? So I didn't get free plants, but no? they actually reimbursed based on the size. Oh, okay. Of the gardens, okay. So yeah. Okay. You have to actually have it in there and plant it. And come you out. got like a rebate. Yeah. You yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's a good program. I guess I, mean, I think that might be ended. Yeah, for I didn't now. see it for this year. This was yeah. last year. Yeah. Um, so, but I think Becky's going to show you um, an example of a homeowner who did a small rain garden all by herself. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry about the clicking. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you so much for coming. Um, that's very exciting that you participated in that um, opportunity for homeowners. Wonderful. Um, and you have an amazing yard. I've seen it through Facebook. So <laughs> one day I'll come visit. Yeah, I call it my war on lawn. Excellent. I like it. Um, so thank you so much, Joel, for inviting us here today to share information about the Jersey Friendly Yards program. Um, we are, um, as Karen mentioned, we are trying to spread the word about Jersey Friendly Yards for many reasons to reduce non-point source pollution from fertilizer um, that ends up in the Barnegat Bay or our um, any of our water bodies in our watershed or throughout New Jersey. Um, and um, our, our specific focus today, um, we wanted to share information about how to, to combat climate change because that is certainly a very important uh, topic that we're, we're dealing with. Um, maybe a more appropriate title might be adapting to climate change um, or a little bit of both, right? Um, so before I start my my PowerPoint program and show you some of the gardens that um, we installed through uh, several different grants. Um, I wanted to just share some facts with you about climate change, specifically um, New Jersey, how it relates to New Jersey's um, weather climate. And um, you may or may not know these facts, but I thought they were pretty interesting myself. So scientists have been keeping records on temperature in New Jersey. Uh, since 1895, so we have a pretty good database so far. Of the 10 warmest summers during this period, nine of them have been in the past 20 years. Um, last year was extremely rainy in New Jersey, which I thought was really nice. I had a nice 
lush garden, but um, sometimes a little bit too much rain at times, right? And it seems to all come at once. Um, in fact, 2018 was the wettest on record going back to 1895 with almost 65 inches of precipitation. Um, and that's almost 19 inches above the statewide normal. Um, and we didn't even experience a tropical storm of any kind. Um, scientific modeling predicts that we will continue to see warmer and wetter conditions in the future. Um, there's about 4% more moisture in our atmosphere now. Um, and greenhouse, greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide, of course, continue to increase. Um, so interspersed between the warmer and wetter conditions are going to be bouts of cold and flash uh, droughts. So basically our new normal is weather extremes. Um, so I want to talk to you a little bit about how to combat or adapt to these different changes that are going on in our, in our world. Um, so first a little bit about me and who I am and what I do. Um, I work for the Ocean County Soil Conservation District. Has anybody ever heard of the Ocean County Soil Conservation District or a soil conservation district? Okay, good. So you're familiar with your Burlington Soil Conservation District. Are you Gina Berg by any chance? Back there? No, okay. My boss said, say hello to Gina Berg from the Burlington County Soil Conservation District if she happens to be here today. Um, here. Here. Oh, okay, excellent. Later you can point me in her direction. Thank you. Um, so our district originated in 1952, and uh, we are one of 15 different soil conservation districts in New Jersey, and we are basically a regulatory agency, um, and we work to implement the New Jersey Soil Erosion and Sediment Control Act, um, and that governs various aspects of new development that goes on. Um, so the Ocean County Soil Conservation District were a subdivision of the New Jersey Department of Agriculture, uh, but we're locally governed and uh, we uh, operate within the boundaries of Ocean County and other districts operate within their own local boundaries. So um, I am, I consider myself to be very fortunate. I am not one of the regulatory agents in uh, the soil district. I'm actually the education outreach coordinator. So. Um, I do not go to sites being developed and cry over all the trees that are being knocked down. Um, instead, I um, have the wonderful privilege and opportunity to speak to audiences like yourself and share um, information about how you can create a, a healthier yard um, and a healthier environment for yourself. Um, so Karen and I work together um, through many different initiatives um, in partnership with the Soil District and the Barnegat Bay Partnership, um, which Karen represents. And one of those initiatives is the Jersey Friendly Yards Initiative. And since the launch of the Jersey Friendly Yards website, which was in 2015, uh, BBP and the Soil District have implemented over 100 different Jersey uh, Friendly Yards educational programs, workshops, conferences, um, garden tours, uh, speaking events and webinars, uh, averaging about one program or event uh, per month over the past five years. So we're very, very busy and we like it that way. Um, through these numerous programs, we've engaged over 2,500 community members of all ages um, in best management practices. For the creation and creation of sustainable landscaping for a healthy environment. Um, we've given away over 200 uh, free Jersey friendly plants to program participants um, to add to their own home gardens as part of different grants we've had. Um, and we have facilitated uh, the installation of 25 Jersey friendly gardens throughout the Barnica Bay watershed. So that's one of my favorite things to do is to actually get my hands in the soil and dig gardens. I'll come to your yard and dig our garden. Um, and uh, install the plants and select the plants and, and help the homeowners or the business or whoever we're working with through our grant um, to establish their own Jersey friendly uh, yard or garden. Um, so Jersey friendly gardens are friendly to wildlife, friendly to people, uh, friendly to our communities and friendly to our environment. 
And um, this is Karen standing in front of um, one of our Jersey friendly gardens at Ocean First Bank in Tom's River on Hooper Avenue, the administrative um, office there. And we were very fortunate to win the 2018 Garden of Distinction Award, thank you very much, uh, from the prestigious Pennsylvania Horticulture Society. Um, so that their territories encompass not only Pennsylvania, but New York and um, some other areas. So look into that because um, they have lots of different categories for homeowners and businesses and community gardens. So, but it was quite an honor and um, we like to, to brag a little bit about so, um, so in our changing world, uh, we propose that you make your yard Jersey friendly. And as our climate changes, so must we. Um, sometimes it might seem like there's really nothing we can do as an individual. I know sometimes I feel like I'm just kind of standing still, staring and wondering, what can I do? How can I help? Um, but um, you can take actions uh, to manage the impacts and reduce vulnerability, um, reduce exposure to harmful effects of climate change, and, and exploit any benefits of climate change. Um, ultimately, we're going to have to adapt um, to climate change. And one area in which you can focus your efforts is at home in your landscaping. So this photo actually shows a homeowner's yard after she took actions to uh, manage climate change impacts. So some of the ways that you too can con uh, combat climate change or adapt to climate change um, in your yard using the Jersey Friendly Yards website, tools and resources to help you. Um, you can start with healthy soil. Um, as Karen mentioned, we're the soil district. So of course, you know, start with healthy soil. Um, improve energy efficiency in your yard. I'll talk a little bit more about ways you can do that. Um, water conservation is really important to keep in mind with your landscape. Um, plant trees and shrubs, and I'll talk more about all of these things. Um, greening your lawn, eliminate invasive species. Um, think about choosing the right plant for the right place when you're planting your garden. And of course, support wildlife is one that's near and dear to my heart, of course. So you can create this from this. So that's the after and, and the before photo for this homeowner. So lawns require a lot of fossil fuel-based fertilizer, uh, fossil fuel-powered mowing, um, and sometimes generous watering. Unless you're like me, I do none of those things. And you know, my lawn looks kind of kind of like that. I think that's a that's a winter lawn, and my lawn looks somewhat like that sometimes in the summer too. Um, but uh, while there's no scientific consensus yet on the climate change um, impact of a lawn, um, you can make yours as climate friendly as possible by choosing drought tolerant grass species. And Karen knows grasses better than I do. I believe Kentucky bluegrass is the one that you should choose. You should not choose. Thank you. Thank you. Do not plant Kentucky bluegrass. Tall fescue. Great. So tall fescue is drought tolerant and doesn't need a lot of fertilizing. Good. Thank you. Um, mow your lawn high. Uh, water during the coolest part of the day and leave your grass clippings to fertilize the soil naturally. Things that you may already know, may already be doing. Um, or you can decide that instead of a lawn, you create a Jersey-friendly yard. And... Here's another view of that homeowner's um, yard. So this homeowner, her name is Phyllis, and she was participating in one of our Jersey Friendly um, Yards grant programs. So 10 homeowners in the Barnica Bay watershed were provided with intensive training on the Jersey Friendly Yards website. So similar to what Karen just provided for you, but over a series of, of several hours and several different weekends, we met together. Um, so they knew know, they know the website inside and out by now. And um, they were given soil tests. So they were shown how to take a soil sample. Um, we took their samples, we sent them to Rutgers for them, and they got the results of those tests and used those tests to select their plants. Um, they used the Jersey Friendly Yards plant database, of course, to select their plants with some assistance from, from myself. And um, Phyllis actually loves pollinators. That's 
what really drives her gardening experiences. And she wanted to um, lose her lawn, exchange her lawn for a mini uh, pollinator meadow. And her um, meadow actually goes all the way around her, her house. Um, so here you can see she created a really nice foundation of a meadow that um, she's uh, starting to grow already. So with the Jersey Friendly Plants database, she selected pollinator friendly native plants, um, including the common milkweed, um, nine bark, um, which both support nectaring butterflies and bees. And you may know that the monarch is kind of the ambassador, right, of um, saving pollinators. Um, does anybody plant for pollinators in your yard right now? Good, excellent. So um, insects, uh, generally speaking, insects, specifically our ambassador monarch, um, are very dependent on very specific plants. So scientists would call them specialists. Um, they specialize in eating certain foods. And if they don't have those certain foods, they will literally starve in a forest of lots of different edible, you know, vegetation. We might think, oh, it'll eat this or that leaf or, you know, feed on this tree or that bush or that perennial. But that's not the case. They're specialists. They can only process or digest certain chemicals. And that is the case for this um, monarch caterpillar. It can only eat milkweed. So without milkweed, it will no longer survive. So by planting um, native species that support wildlife, all stages of the life cycle um, of insects in particular, um, we're helping to assist the survival of those species that um, will inevitably be affected by a rapidly changing climate. Um, so we're ensuring vital food sources for them, not only for the adults that can are more generalists, they can nectar on lots of different flowers, but we're ensuring that the larval stages have food as well. So here's another homeowner garden. Her name is Jill. Um, she also participated in our, our homeowner grant, and she um, also loves to plant for pollinators and she eliminated portions of her yard um, right around the edges, kind of like the interactive yard that Karen showed you at the very end. You can see all the edges of the yard were kind of planted with um, native and Jersey friendly species. So she started doing that. Um, she, a couple of different plants, she planted um, Coreopsis, uh, purple cone flower, uh, milkweeds, of course, Amsonia, and lots of other pollinator friendly plants. Um, she also planted a plant called Virginia bluebells. Is anybody familiar with Virginia bluebells? So take note of this really beautiful plant. Um, and here's a picture of it. So they're an early blooming native bulb and um, they come up in the spring and they have this beautiful blue flower. So, you know, similar to the way a daffodil might come up or a tulip. Um, and just like the daffodils and tulips, they're flowers die back and their vegetation completely die dies back as well. So then you're left with a nice clean palette for all of your summer perennials to bloom, you know, in its place. So that's a great choice. Um, but Jill's yard wasn't always Jersey friendly. Um, the border of her yard uh, was lined with euonymus, burning bush. Is anybody familiar with that shrub, burning bush? Um, it's a really beautiful one, right? It has nice um, red leaves in the fall, um, but it's highly invasive. And um, when working with homeowners or anyone who loves their landscape or loves their garden, you have to really tap gently, you know, um, when sharing information about removing invasive species. I certainly don't want to go in there and say, okay, take that out, take that out, take that out. And those might be their favorite plants. Um, but soon... Um, I kind of used Jill's love of pollinators to share information about what might be better for the pollinators. And when she realized she was seeing a lot more pollinators in her yard by planting the right plants, she shared this photo with me. She <laughs> said she finally took a chainsaw to the euonymus and cut them all down. So go Jill. Um, so she, uh, traded them in for, um, I think it was Amsonia that she planted in its place. So um, before planting your garden, um, it's really important to select the appropriate plants. And in order to select the appropriate plant, we need to know where we're starting with our soil. So start with healthy soil is a really important step. 
So it's step number two of the Jersey Friendly Yards website. Um, soil testing provides lots of information um, specifically about the texture of your soil. What texture do you have in your yard? So when I say texture, yeah, that's a good question. So when I say texture, is it sand, silt, or clay? So those are basically called textures of your soil, or you might have a mixture. So we pretty much all have sandy soil around here. Um, I know in Ocean County, we're always dealing with sandy soil. And people are always telling me, I hate my sandy soil. What can I do about it? I need to get rid of it and get something better. And I say, embrace your sandy soil. Um, it's well draining. You don't have problems that other folks maybe in northern New Jersey might have with their clay soil. Um, and there's so many beautiful native plants um, that thrive in sandy soil. So know your soil texture, um, know your pH. Um, we usually have um, acidic, slightly acidic soil here in Jersey and certain plants grow better in acidic soil and certain plants don't. So know, know your soil's pH. Um, you can determine how uh, much macro or micronutrients in your soil from a soil test, how much organic matter your soil contains. Um, so these tests are all gonna guide you into what plants you're going to be able to choose. Uh-huh. Is there a better time to do it? You mentioned nutrients and microorganisms. Is there a better time to do the soil test? Um, I, I think when your soil's not frozen is probably one yeah, good place yeah. to start. Uh, so I, I don't know that there's a better time. I know that most people do it in spring or fall, and it's going to take longer for you to get your results back because that's when everybody else does it. So um, I think, you know, any time is a good time. Um, uh, do know though that when you are getting your soil tested for a certain place in your yard, you might have an idea that you're going to have a little lawn in the middle and then you're going to put your shady garden in over here and maybe another sunny garden there and maybe a vegetable garden here. For each of those visions you have, your lawn, your shady garden, your perennial garden, your shrub area, you might want to do a different soil test for each of those areas because um, when you fill out the paperwork, you're actually allowed to choose what you plan on planting or what's already there. And then when you get your results, you get recommendations from the lab that say, based on what you have there already, if you have lawn already established and you want to know how the, what soil is there to support the lawn, it's going to give you certain recommendations. And if you say, well, I want to plant some perennials, it's going to give you certain recommendations on how to um, best amend your lawn for those particular plants. So yeah, thank you for that question. Um, so information about uh, rector soil testing. And as you saw, Karen pointed out on the website, Start With Healthy Soil gives you a video on how to take your soil sample. You can download the proper paperwork, et cetera, et cetera. So this is another homeowner. Um, this house belongs to, to Lisa. Um, she uh, is a very excellent gardener. Um, she's into um, planting food uh, on her yard, uh, native uh, food sources. Um, and for the Jersey Friendly Yards grant, she wanted to tackle one particular area in her yard um, that was giving her some, some problems. She has some bare patches on her lawn, and it's right near that downspout. So you can kind of picture when it rains, the water kind of rushes out of the downspout and starts eroding away her soil because there's a little slope right there. Um, so she decided to create a small rain garden. So using resources and information on the Jersey Friendly Yards website, using the eight steps to a Jersey Friendly Yard, plan before you plant, um, she began to create her rain garden, digging her sandy soil. She has gorgeous sandy soil. Uh, she shaped her garden nicely. She selected appropriate plants from the database and um, determined the layout of the different plants and installed them and... Um, it just so happened that she did that all in one day. Uh, and that evening, it started to rain. So she was able to see whether or not her garden was actually successful. And it was. So the water poured right out of the drown spout and right into her, her garden. And it filled up. Um, so basically, 
uh, you know, within 24 hours or a little bit less, I'm sure the water was able to percolate right through her nice sandy soil, which is a great benefit of sandy soil. Um, and capture that rain. So she basically turned that little portion of her yard into a sponge, which is exactly what we want. And um, that water, of course, is going down into the ground. That's where we want it to go. And if we all did that, we'd be recharging our aquifer. Um, so uh, Lisa had a lot of great success. And there it is. So in the places where um, her plants hadn't grown in yet, she um, put a lot of uh, mulch, a nice thick layer of mulch. And as the mulch slowly breaks down, it produces um, nutrient-rich soil amendment that eliminates the need for any of those fossil fuel-based synthetic fertilizers. And it helps the soil to store more carbon, which is what we want. Um, so that mulch um, also holds in moisture in the soil. Um, from any bare patches that might otherwise have, um, the water would be lost. And um, she's enjoying her beautiful new garden. There she is. So it's important to choose uh, drought tolerant plants. Um, water conservation is going to be one of the most important um, uh, things we need to think about as our climate warms. And at Jake's Branch County Park, um, we call this one the gateway to the pines in Ocean County. Um, we have five Jersey-friendly gardens there. And um, we, we call this our demonstration garden. So those five different gardens can kind of showcase different conditions that you might have in your yard. Um, so we have a, a rain garden, a wetland garden, a woodland garden, a butterfly garden, and a sun garden. And there's no irrigation for any of these gardens, which uh, is always a challenge. Um, but we're working to find drought tolerant plants um, that are also deer resistant. So the rain garden is planted with shrubs and perennial herbs um, so they can withstand periods of wet and also periods of drought. So a couple of them that we planted include um, bottle brush buckeye, uh, black chokeberry, and a ground cover, <clears throat> excuse me, called uh, golden ragwort. And um, this is a, a really amazing plant um, that I discovered. It's a low-growing broadleaf evergreen. And um, as I said, it's a ground cover. So it pushes up little yellow daisy-like flowers early in the spring, just when you're looking for where's the first flower? Are they going to bloom yet? Well, the golden ragwort will be one of your first bloomers. Um, it's very hardy, has relatively large leaves that remain green all year round, all throughout the winter. And um, once their flowers die back, you're just left with kind of lush green leaves, kind of like um, hosta looking uh, plants, much more lush, I think though. Um, it completely covers the ground. So it's kind of an alternative to mulch. It's like green mulch, you could call it. And through the, the ground cover, you can grow other plants like ferns and shrubs. Uh, the wetland garden um, is planted in an area at Jake's Branch um, that's near a pond. So the water table is a little bit higher there. It does remain somewhat moist throughout the entire year. And um, the garden includes several shrubs such as buttonbush, red twig dogwood, uh, winterberry holly, um, some hibiscus, and several different perennial herbs. And this is winterberry holly, one of my favorite plants. Um, has lots of bright red berries, and they're going to persist throughout the winter and offer an excellent food source for birds. Um, do you have a winterberry holly in your yard? Yes. But we know each other through the birding world, so um, I figure you have all the great plants in your yard that are good for feeding birds. Um, so the leaves um, are lost. It's deciduous. It's unlike our American holly. This one is deciduous. It drops its leaves, but you're left with those beautiful red berries uh, throughout the winter. Um, shrubs. Karen mentioned that I was going to talk a little bit about shrubs. So shrubs, and I'm looking at my time. How are we with time? Okay. Good. Okay, good. Um, shrubs uh, and trees as well, uh, they have a, a long lifespan. Um, so large shrubs in particular remove more heat trapping carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, more so than other plants like perennials, um, and trees even more so than shrubs. So when you're considering your landscape, think about shrubs and trees. 
Um, this is our woodland garden. Uh, it's shady in the morning and it's sunny in the afternoon. And pictured here is John Leonard, one of our amazing volunteers. And he's among the high bush blueberry and the mountain laurel. Um, I mentioned early the euonymus, the burning bush invasive species, has beautiful red leaves though in the fall. And that's, I think, why people are so enamored with it. The high bush blueberry, as you may know, has beautiful red leaves in the fall as well. So that's a good alternative. Um, also growing in the woodland garden is ink uh, berry holly. Um, another cousin of our American holly. This one is, however, evergreen. It keeps its leaves. Um, this shrub also has beautiful black berries, ink berry holly. Um, another wonderful food source for birds in the wintertime. And amazingly, I am seeing more and more now this ink berry holly and the winter berry holly uh, being planted around foundations for places like Wawa and other you know, businesses. So people are taking note of these native plants, drought tolerant native plants. Um, our sun garden uh, features plants like horse mint, uh, which is one of several attractive mints, uh, plants in the mint family. So mints are a good choice if you have deer that come through your yard. Um, also, um, uh, sweet spire. Um, so sweet spire shrub, um, it is a, a smaller shrub. Um, it remains nicely shaped and it has these really, really beautiful white flowers that bloom uh, early in the summer. Very, very attractive to pollinators. Um, and in the fall, its leaves also turn various shades of red. So standing in the sun garden, there's Lisa. Um, she also helps us out, um, as a volunteer managing these ship gardens and, um, she is holding a sweet fern. Are you familiar with the plant called a sweet fern? Um, Comptonia is the genus. Um, it grows all over the Pine Barrens. It's a, a low growing perennial slash shrub looking plant. And um, it might grow to about two or three feet high. And when planted together in clumps, it just offers a really wonderful um, uh, native um, ornament to your landscape. Um, very drought tolerant, very hardy. Definitely one of my favorite plants. Um, and here is in Jake's Branch County Park, our original butterfly garden. Um, and last year, those are our wonderful volunteers, Joanne and Kelly. And last year, Jake's decided they wanted to um, utilize the field where the butterfly garden was for other purposes. So we had to move the butterfly garden. I totally understand their reasons. No problem. Um, it gave us a chance to kind of um, start over and, and to try new things, uh, planting a garden. So once we determined our new location, um, instead of tilling the soil uh, to create the new bed, we actually just smothered the grass. So we started with straw um, tilling will actually increase carbon dioxide emissions because as the soil is broken up um, and the organic matter, which is carbon based, um, is raised to the surface and converts to carbon dioxide and then is released into the atmosphere. That's why a lot of agriculture now they're going no till agriculture. Um, so you can do the same thing in your yard, eliminate the tilling and it actually um, keeps the organic matter and the carbon in the soil and our soil acts like a carbon sink. So we want that. Um, so we added straw, we layered it with cardboard, we layered the compost, we layered the cardboard with compost, um, and we added a layer of mulch, and then it sat for the winter. So it did take more time rather than tilling as you, you do it and you're ready, your bed is ready. Um, so it sat for the winter. And then in the spring, with the help of some scouts and our master uh, naturalists, we planted our pollinator friendly um, plants that we had selected using the Jersey Friendly Yards plant database. So now we have a new butterfly garden. It's a little bit more, a little bit smaller, a little bit more manageable. So that's a good thing. Um, and uh, in this garden, we demonstrate um, uh, plants such as giant hyssop and butterfly weed, which are both excellent for uh, pollinators and both deer resistant. Um, another one of our Jersey Friendly Yards projects took place at Bayhead Shores Homeowners Association along the coast, which Joel confirmed is still part of the Pinelands National Reserve. National Reserve. So um, 
uh, this homeowners association, they experienced some damage to their community beach from Hurricane Sandy, and they wanted to repair the shoreline. So we used a variety of different um, plants, of course, including uh, American beach grass. Um, we used coastal panic grass, switch grass, uh, seaside goldenrod, and beach plum all grow great in sandy soil and all salt tolerant. Um, and together they all offer really sturdy root systems. They create biodiversity and support wildlife. And these American goldfinches are benefiting from the seeds of the switchgrass. And often people, I think, shy away from grasses. I know it took me a couple years to, um, uh, if, if I change the way I look at things, things I look at change. So I might think grasses in my garden, they look like grass. But if I think grasses in my garden, they support wildlife. So suddenly the only thing that's changed is my perception really. So um, I want to encourage you to try some native grasses in your garden as well. Some of my favorites um, for Pine Barrens yards include purple love grass. And there they are growing right in the sand, need no care at all whatsoever, and little blue stem. So um, they provide um, host plants for native butterflies and moth species. Um, their leaves and seeds provide food, cover, nesting material for birds. And as I said, zero care, my kind of plant. All right, so another one of our county parks, Caddis Island. It's already naturally native. Um, it's a beautiful park to visit. Um, and their staff chose to landscape the area surrounding the nature center um, with plants instead of having lawn to mow, which good job. Um, gasoline powered garden tools, um, as you may know, are major emitters of carbon dioxide, um, which is of course the primary global warming gas. Um, pesticides um, are, and, and fertilizers are also fossil fuel based, um, which are all commonly used on lawns, especially if they're being maintained by maybe a maintenance crew. Um, so if you choose to have a lawn, consider using an electric or push mower. Um, everybody looks at me like, what? <laughs> a push mower, rake your leaves instead of blowing them. It's fun, right? Raking your leaves? Leave your leaves or leave your leaves there. Yes, good job, leave the leaves there. Um, or choose other low emission uh, tools. Um, or just simply reduce the amount of lawn that you have and plant, plant a garden. Um, so gas powered mower, uh, using one for an hour pollutes 10 to 12 times more than an average car. Yikes. Uh, so at Caddis Island, that's what we did. We planted a garden or we, we enhanced their landscape with some different bursts of color. Um, again, deer uh, resistant plants as much as possible. And we were successful finding some, this foxglove beard tongue. Uh, which is one of my favorite flowers, blooms in early spring. It's a perennial. Those beautiful little white bell-shaped flowers are very attractive to, to birds and hummingbirds as well. And then the seaside goldenrod, the deer haven't touched that, um, blooms in the fall and provides an excellent source, I'm sure you know, for monarchs and other migrating butterflies. Um, and uh, this is a um, golden crowned kinglet that is benefiting from uh, the, that's a ruby crowned kinglet that is benefiting from the seaside golden rod as well. Um, we also planted a really lovely flower, try this one, foam flower, uh, which makes a nice ground cover and a red bud tree. And um, the red bud tree, does anybody have a red bud tree in New York? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, just a favorite tree, right? So that they, they grow. If you have a small yard, they, they remain kind of small, like a dogwood size. Um, but this is what you're going to see in the spring. Just cover the, the actual um, trunk of the tree and all the branches are just covered with these beautiful little pink flowers. It's just amazing. You don't need forsythia, right? Plant a, a red bud uh, tree instead. Um, trees remove more heat trapping carbon dioxide from the atmosphere than any other plants. Um, Well-placed trees offer summer shade and protection from winter winds. 
reducing emissions associated with home heating and air conditioning. I'm sure you've heard that before. Um, trees can absorb and store as much as a ton of carbon pollution from the atmosphere. I'm sure that's depending on how big your tree is. Um, and if every one of America's 85 million gardening households planted just one young shade tree in their backyard or community, those trees would absorb more than 2 million tons of carbon dioxide a year. So we can do this. We can do this together. So again, here's our award-winning Ocean First Bank Jersey Friendly Garden. So here we eliminated about 200 square foot of lawn. My first time using a sod cutter. That was kind of fun. Um, and we replaced it with our Jersey Friendly Garden. And we, of course, selected lots of plants from the database to showcase in this demonstration garden. So when customers came, they could see what was blooming um, and go home and plant those in their yard. We included one called Baptisia australis. And that's this one right here. And we planted one there and we planted one on the other side. And um, it's a legume. So plants in the legume family actually naturally convert nitrogen um, from the atmosphere into uh, nit nitrogen. They fix it in the soil. So that's your natural fertilizer right there. So try to find some legumes that you like. Um, plants in the legume family and plant those in your garden. <clears throat> um, we also, as you notice, planted our plants really close together. Um, and a lot of folks, I, I see um, somebody had called it a sea of mulch, seas of mulch. I see them all over, you know, banks and different places where you have a sea of mulch and then one plant there and one plant there and a sea of mulch. And I look and I think, the plants are really pretty, but wouldn't it be lovely to just cover that sea of mulch with beautiful, lush green plants with lots of colorful flowers? So that's what we did with this particular garden. And I, I think it looks lovely. Um, and it's it, so beneficial. Um, so basically, it's going to um, keep weeds at bay, right? So with that sea of mulch, you're constantly weeding. Um, it's going to act like a natural green mulch and keep the soil covered and hold down moisture um, and prevent erosion. Um, so there's lots of benefits to that. Um, when the plants die back, um, I try to get there before the maintenance crew does and say, you know, leave the plants. It's okay that they look messy. Um, I understand it's a bank and they, they want to cut everything down. But in your own garden, be a messy gardener. Um, when those plants all die back and they're standing there brown and kind of falling apart in front of you, they're providing habitat and places for insects and critters to to overwinter and food sources for birds um, and other wildlife. So again, change the way you look at things, things you look at change. Instead of being a messy garden, it's a haven for wildlife that they need in the wintertime. Um, so we selected um, a couple favorites here um, for, for all seasons. We have false sunflower, um, obedient plant is this really pretty pink one right here, um, blazing star. So all growing together, providing this really beautiful, beautiful garden. And in the fall, we have this nice showy goldenrod. So when I took this picture in September, I walked up and I could hear the buzz of the bees before I even got there to see them. So you can kind of look and see just bees all over the showy goldenrod. So when you are ready to plant your Jersey friendly yard and help save the planet, um, remember these Jersey friendly steps. So plan before you plant. This is a great place for you to begin. It's important to kind of just sketch out. You don't need a, a professional. You can do it yourself. Um, sketch out your property, including the buildings and walkways and sunny areas and shady areas and where the sun's coming up and sun's going down and which side the sun is on in different seasons. Um, and identify a purpose for your garden or landscape. What do you want to do? Um, do you want to create a sponge? Do you want to... Um, uh, a garden that supports uh, birds and butterflies? Do you want to eliminate lawn? Um, in what way do you want to combat climate change? So start with healthy soil. Um, here's another Ocean First um, bank that we, we worked on. Um, it was a brand new bank in Jackson. So they had just put some landscaping in and we came and we 
we pulled some of it out with our permission, some invasive barberry, and we um, exchanged it for some other beautiful plants. Um, so start with healthy soil. Always um, get your soil tested. Um, remember that your soil is going to be your carbon sink. Keep it covered. Allow plants to decompose naturally in your soil and disturb it as little as possible. Step three is water wisely. Uh, select drought tolerant plants so you don't have to water your garden. Um, one of them is this gorgeous aromatic aster. It is still blooming in my yard. Um, it's probably going to die back from all this cold snap we've had right now, but it's the last blooming plant I have. Um, and it's just a gorgeous plant, drought tolerant. I promise you, I have no time to tend to my garden. So my garden is full of plants that need no tending. This is one of them. It's a good one. Um, and reduce the need for chemical fertilizers. Um, they take a significant amount of energy to uh, be produced and um, are not always good for our environment. Um, and so imagine that little grub being pulled out of a soil, a lawn with lots of fertilizer on it. And do you want to feed that little baby bird chemical fertilizer? <laughs> So think about that. Um, minimize uh, risks when managing pests, which of course means um, try not to use pesticide or think about it before you do and think about who is going to uh, benefit and who is not going to benefit. So this little um, yellow warbler is going to be bringing this little caterpillar home to feed its babies. So do you want those babies to be eating pesticide? Uh, reduce the lawn. Um, I think we, we talked a lot about the importance of reducing lawn and um, creating a, a garden instead. And this is another one of our homeowners and she has really sandy soil. And you can see that little corner of her yard um, wasn't even growing any grass. It would just kind of collect leaves and she had a lot of soil in her street. Um, it, it was just eroding away. So she instead put this little garden in there. And it's a sea of mulch right now. Uh, you know, we only have $150 of value of plants to give them to start. But she's on her way. She's on her way. She's very excited. Um, so step seven is create wildlife habitat. And... Um, I love this sign. This sign um, is in front of a uh, Jersey Friendly Garden or a native plant garden in Seaside Park. And it on the sign, of course, it lists all these things. And I love this line right here. Um, it actually uses that word biodiversity. So attract wildlife and increase biodiversity. So if you haven't heard that word before, it's out there. And I actually read it on a a food package of some, I don't know, crackers, whatever it was I bought. And it talked about biodiversity. I actually had to text Karen that day and said, Karen, I'm just, I just bought this supermarket product and it had this word biodiversity. So we need lots of species on our planet to have a healthy planet. Um, and I'm so excited that um, the folks who planted the Seaside Park Garden recognized that and put it in their sign. And step eight is reduce, reuse, recycle. So you can kind of think about that and in terms of uh, compost is one way to reduce, reuse, and recycle um, vegetation in your yard and create healthy soil. Um, and don't forget to use the Jersey Friendly Plant Database. So when I'm kind of planning out a garden, I like to pick out all my plants and kind of map them out and see, okay, what colors are they going to be and what season are they going to be that color? Um, and basically plant the right plant in the right place. So here we are planting our plants in that award-winning Ocean First Jersey Friendly Garden. And there it is. One more time. So, um, highlight there. Projects. so if you want to learn more about our projects that I just introduced you to, um, you can go to the Jersey Family Yards website and click on pilot projects, and then you can read 
all about our pilot projects and see all the plant lists um, that we, we have posted there for all the different gardens. And finally, that's our contact information. So there's con Karen's contact information and my contact information. And I have some cards with me. I will put on the table as well for you to take when you, when you leave. And that sign up sheet is actually a sign up sheet for our newsletter. So the soil district has a newsletter and Barnica Bay partnership has a newsletter. We try really hard to put one out a month. So basically what I'm telling you is you won't be inundated with emails. I promise you. Um, we try to do one at least once a month and just tell you about the programs and events that are going on and any other grant opportunities for homeowners or, you know, folks in our community and, um, the Jersey Finley Yard Conference. We basically advertise um, those types of things. So, uh, and one last thing, please take these on your way out. This is our low maintenance landscaping guide. This is the soil district's kind of um, signature piece of literature. And this was what was used to kind of be the foundation of the Jersey Friendly Yards website. And this is a fabulous, easy guide. Um, you can take this with you along with your plant list in the database to the nursery. And this has lots of colorful pictures and information about native plants. Um, and you can just point and say, I want that one. Um, and your, your nursery um, staff will help you find that. So I think that's it, unless we have any questions, right? What, what questions do you have for Karen and I? No. <laughs> Are you excited? Are you gonna do some homework and go on the Jersey County Yards? Website and look at the database and go through the, the eight steps to Jersey Friendly Yard. And it starts small. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Is the plan for the Jersey Friendly Yards is that going to go statewide? That's our plan. It is a statewide website. Um, of course, right now it's kind of focused on the Barnaby Bay Partnership and our grants take place in, in the uh, in the Barnaby Bay Watershed. Um, mm -hmm. But we are really, you know, kind of peddling this now <laughs> with the idea that hopefully someone will, you know, see it and want to share it with others. And we are happy to, you know, train you on the website and offer you the PowerPoint or help you put a PowerPoint together with your local, you know, gardens that you've been involved with different grant projects. So. We can't traverse the state ourselves. Yeah. Um, so we're looking for volunteers yeah. who are really into this and interested in other parts of the state that would mm -hmm. not mind, you know, doing a program here or there, or just talking to their local garden club or something like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, if it's you, let us know. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Karen, did I hear you say that the, uh, the tool has a uh, feature that you can search out suppliers of some of these plants? Um, it's, not a search tool, but there is on the website um, a where to buy page. Oh. Yeah, it's under the um, Jersey Friendly Plants tab, and then it lists them by county. So it's hard. Also, um, you know, for even more extensive list of plants and places that sell them, the Native Plant Society of New Jersey website is a good place to look to. Have you found that little catchphrase and change the way you see things? Um, if you change the way you look at things, things you look at change. Yeah. And it's attributed to a person whose name I don't remember, but uh, I'm not sure it was me. It, was me. <laughs> <laughs> it really, when I first saw that years ago, it kind of, you too, maybe. I yeah. thought, oh, that's an interesting way to kind of look at the world. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you very much yeah, for, thanks coming. So much for coming. Thank you for coming. Yeah. You think of any questions? Feel free to check out your